So we've heard that most engine wear occurs at startup, and we've also heard that cold starts are the most damaging time for an engine. But why is that? Why are these periods of time so critically damaging to an engine? Now, before we begin, we're not saying the engine is going to explode. By damaging, we mean there is excessive amounts of wear and tear going on inside the engine. So over a car's lifetime, you may be reducing its overall mileage capacity by about 20,000 miles just through the way that we start the car. So it's quite an important consideration, particularly if we want to keep our car and hang on to it. And we can also avoid lots of annoying maintenance costs that come up, which are primarily down to the way that we've abused the car when we first start it. The idea of warming up to avoid injuries is quite natural and common to us, but do we afford the same courtesy to our cars, particularly our engines? Do we allow them to warm up? Is it really that important? So the components in the engine are made of metal. As metal warms up, it expands. So the shape of the components in the engine are changing. You probably won't see this with your naked eye, but the change is happening as those components warm up. So most of the components start off relatively small and as they heat up, they expand. If you've got forged parts, particularly forged pistons and forged cranks, they expand at a different rate to non-forged metals. So they tend to start off even smaller. And as the engine warms up, they start to expand. Now, you want everything to be correctly bedded into place. The pistons are traveling up and down in the cylinders with the force of the combustion event. So if those pistons are not fully mated to the cylinder walls and the piston ring, aren't fully bedded in. Some of that combustion event is going to blast past the piston and you're going to be losing some of that energy. So straight away, you're going to be down on power. And that excessive energy and pressure inside the crankcase is not going to do a lot of good. So it's going to cause potential problems elsewhere. And there's also other issues like oil dilution problems. And the positive crankcase ventilation system also takes a hit because it is dealing with such excessive pressures. It's another reason to avoid hammering the engine hard when it is cold before those pistons and rings have fully expanded. Those pistons and piston rings are also going to be scraping more along the side of the walls just because they've got a little more lateral motion because they've not fully expanded. It can wear the piston rings prematurely wearing them down and it can also cause scoring on the cylinder wall itself which again will cause a loss of compression and other issues further down in the, your car's lifespan. So the pistons have more lateral motion. It's just a question of them being able to vibrate and rattle around from side to side a little bit as well as traveling up and down. So as they expand and bed in, there is much less of this lateral movement going on. And we would refer to this as piston slap. You can often hear a cold engine rattling and that is down to the piston slap that is going on. So it's a fairly normal part of an engine, but running excessive loads through the engine during this high risk phase will accelerate the wear and tear that we're doing on the engine. So the other big aspect of driving a cold engine is that the oil, the lifeblood of the engine, the lubricant that ensures that metal surfaces are not experiencing great amounts of friction, it's not up to temperature. You're not getting the lubrication that you do when the oil is at the correct temperature. So oils have certainly improved. We have multi-grade oils, full synthetic oils, but even these high tech, highly formulated oils still need to get up to operating temperature to properly lubricate the inside of the engine. Oil is much thicker, it's more viscous when it is cold. So allowing the engine oil to warm up is probably the single biggest factor in the engine wear that goes on. When you first start the engine, it does take a few seconds for the oil to properly circulate around the engine. So it's really good when you first get in the car to to start it up and just leave the engine running for five to ten seconds before you start messing around with the throttle and putting the engine under any load. So in that very low stress situation it gets an opportunity to raise the oil pressure and circulate that oil around the engine and start the lubrication. Most cars we buy now whether it's petrol or diesel will have a particulate filter inside it. So these particulate filters capture the particles, the soot and other stuff that comes out of the combustion process and it stores 
deposit inside this particulate filter. And the idea is the particulate filter gets hot when it runs a regeneration cycle and it burns off those soot particles, emitting much, much smaller particles from the exhaust. Now, what happens in the cold start period is you have an accumulation of soot. More soot is produced. The particulate filter is never going to get hot enough to burn off all of that soot. So this soot accumulation is just going to grow. So we would probably end up having to replace the particulate filter just because we've excessively loaded the engine when it is cold and we've never really allowed the engine to fully warm up. The two things that you must never do on a cold engine is just leave the engine idling. So when a car is idling, it is just dribbling enough fuel into the engine to keep it ticking over, to prevent it from stalling. On a cold engine, it's doing its best to avoid stalling and it's so much more likely to stall because it's not kicked into its closed loop circuit in most cases. Obviously, it's going to depend a little bit on whether you've got a diesel engine or what your engine type is and how the manufacturers have actually designed that engine. But for most engines, they will idle fairly high. The revs will drop a little bit as the temperature starts to rise. And then when the engine is up to operating temperature, it will drop right down to the usual tick over that you experience. So during that idling process, the minimal amount of fuel is used. So it's not there to raise the temperature of the engine. An engine will in fact take substantially longer to warm up when it's just idling. Some people have quoted 15 at 20 minutes in some cases in these extremely cold climates for the car to get enough heat in for people to be able to drive off. Cars will idle almost indefinitely all the while they've got fuel in the tank. So the RPMs are relatively low. Things in the engine are moving fairly slowly. So with the exception of the very first bit, when you first start the engine and the oil is not up to temperature and it's not circulating, there's going to be more wear and tear in that initial period. But after that, things will be fairly gentle and that engine will go through the whole tank of fuel. When we just started the engine, it's producing more moisture. There's a high higher risk of dilution where fuel is running past the cylinder walls in those gaps that we've spoken about earlier. And that ends up in the oil. And the oil is just not hot enough at this time to burn off the fuel and the water and the moisture vapours that have collected in it. So if we combine a bad poor start habits by loading the engine hard and then we shut the engine off before it is warmed up. We're just storing up a whole host of problems for ourselves with damage really to the oil. It's not going to meet its viscosity grade and it's not going to lubricate the engine effectively just because there is so much moisture and fuel inside it. So fuel dilution is a big issue and we can minimise that to a large degree by observing a proper warm up routine. I've seen cars at shows where the engine has been idling for long periods of time and you can see the water burbling out of the exhaust at the back. So certainly a lot more moisture buildup. That's not great for your exhaust system. The fact you've got water in the exhaust can increase the corrosion on the exhaust. Items inside the exhaust like the catalyst, the DPF, they're not really designed to be submerged in vast quantities of water or moisture inside the engine. So it's not great. It won't particularly do much damage just having the engine idling and having lots of moisture building up. So in a lot of cases, you're just storing up potential future problems or creating a need to service the car more regularly rather than doing direct damage to the engine itself. In some cases where you've got a mechanical water pump, the coolant inside the engine is circulating a lot more slowly when the car is idling. There have been instances where people have overheated an engine just because it's idling. But in most modern engines, you don't have to worry about that. They've been very well designed and it's pretty unlikely that an engine is going to overheat while it is just ticking over. But is that the best way of warming up the engine? What can you do? You can't drive the car because it's not safe to do so with all that frost and ice. It's freezing cold inside. You need a little bit of comfort. So rather than just leave your car idling on the drive, the recommendation from people I've spoken to and my own opinion is that you put a little bit of load on the engine, you increase the RPM. So the amount to which you do that will depend greatly on the engine itself. You won't be looking to rev the engine like crazy. In most cases, people will add about 200, 300 RPM. That's all you need. Just that little bit of load takes it above the tick over and gets that engine into the zone where it is starting to warm up. So some people will hold back and wait for the initial revs to drop, the oil to start properly circulating. In reality, that will only take about 30 seconds on most modern cars, most modern engines. 
but you certainly don't want to be sitting there with a brick on the accelerator pedal to warm the engine up quickly. You want to avoid those high RPMs all the while the engine is still potentially cold. I've done another video that specifically goes into turbo engines and it explains the five things that people commonly do to turbo engines that will reduce the life expectancy of the turbocharger itself. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. See you in this next video. Thanks for watching.